This podcast is brought to you by members of the Portland community. Welcome to This Is Us Portland podcast, our local community conversation. We are the host, Mary Pont, Director of Youth Services, and Allison Benke, Outreach Coordinator. Our conversations will cover topics of interest and concern to all members of our community. We will be joined monthly by people who bring their voices of experience and knowledge to our roundtable. Topics of discussion will cover what deeply matters in our town of Portland. Please join us today to learn more about This Is Us Portland initiative. We are joined today by Susan Bransfield, Portland's first selectman, Pastor Philip Johnbarg from Trinity Episcopal Church, Pastor Jane Hawkins from First Congregational Church, Janet Nocek, Director of the Portland Library, and Pastor Donald Watson from Grace and Mercy Church. Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to welcome you all to the table and take an opportunity to go around and please introduce yourselves. I'm uh, the Reverend Phil Bjornberg. I'm the missional uh, priest at the Episcopal Church, Trinity Episcopal Church here in Portland. Hi, I'm Sue Bransfield. I'm for Select Woman in town of Portland. Great to be here. Hi, I'm Donald Watson, pastor of Grace and Mercy Family Ministries. Great to be here. Hi there, I'm Jane Hawken, the pastor at the First Congregational Church of Portland, and it's good to be here. Hi, I'm Janet Nocek. I'm director at Portland Library. I'm glad to be here, too. Well, thank you for all joining us. Um, Today, we really want to talk about what the This Is Us Portland initiative is all about and how your involvement came to be. I'd like to start with Pastor Phil. We'll talk about how did you get involved with This Is Us and how did you how did you get yourself here to the table? Uh, well, um, I came to Portland about a year and a half ago um, as I was appointed at Trinity Church as a newly ordained person. And I was invited to um, to join a group um, that had already been formed, I think, and was told that they met on an annual basis uh, across disciplines. There were clergy there, social workers, etc. cetera. And uh, the energy in the room was so uh, alive that I think um, – it was not just myself, but all of us were inspired to say, gee, why, why me just once a year or once every six months? How about uh, there's a good energy here across disciplines. Why don't we come together more often? And uh, and so uh, that, that was that inspiration that, that there was something alive that connected between the folks at the table um, across disciplines that really got me excited about something fresh happening that um, was unusual. So I wanted to be part of it. Absolutely. Who would like to go next? Mr. Sure, Donald? I'll go next. Oh. <laughs> um, Sue Bransfield. Um, I've been for Select Woman for a number of years. I started in 2003, and uh, here we are in 2018. And over the years, um, recognize that as a community, we have lots of needs. Um, and some of the needs that this group meet, meets and fulfills um are some of our more social needs, um, as well as our community needs, um, sort of the intangibles, the things that make Portland what it is, um, that those things that can make Portland better than it is. And uh, meeting Pastor Watson and Reverend Bjornberg and um, Pastor Jane and, and others really, um, I think, fulfills our town. And, and presents some of the issues that we have and, and talks about some honest things. Some of the things we've talked about is um, a drug misuse, um, alcohol misuse, um, a good use of town resources and how we can make our town better, whether it's a community garden, whether it's hosting a bake sale, or it's just having a coffee clutch where people can feel connected Um, In today's highly technological world, um, it's not always easy to reach out uh, to your neighbor because he or she may not be there or he or she may not be able to be there for you. So to be able to reach out to your community and find ways that we can reach out to each other over the years, over the different topics and things, um, I find very enriching. So it's a great group to be part of. Um, and I get more out of it than probably I give. And I hope that the listeners will um, also engage as time goes on. So thanks for hosting us, Allie and Mary. Uh, It's great to be here. Absolutely. I know the first time that I came out to the table was about a year ago, April of last year, and the energy I agree with Pastor Phil was, I I went home to my husband, and it was just exciting 
because there's so many big topics to be covered that are huge and really hard for people to hear and information that needs to get out there. But the the passion behind it and then the need to connect was wonderful. I felt I was tingly. It was you walked out and you're like, wow, this yeah. is this is phenomenal. And it's in our small town and people really want to address these issues and really want to get it, the word out to our our families and our um, community members. So. And I think when when you mentioned our our small town, I think that unfortunately people feel in a small town, you don't have the same concerns or needs that you find in a big city. I'll say a big city, Middletown is our big city. And we find being in this small town that that's not true at all, that we have the same exact needs. They might be smaller numbers than you see in a city, but I think we have to identify the needs. We have to address the needs. And starting with that social service group that started so many years back, that's how we started. We started by addressing those needs that we knew were in our town. Maybe some people are those holiday people that come out and understand at the holiday time, but it's a 12 month a year time that we all look at different needs that, that happen. And I know our churches play a, a big role and when people walk through your doors of the needs and or people that come into the library as well. So um, with that, why don't we continue our conversation? Yeah, uh, I'm Donald Watson. Um, uh, and I actually sat in this probably a year ago. And when I sat into this a year ago, I came curious, trying to find out what, what can we do as a church to be a part of the community. We just didn't want to come in and just have church on Sunday and then go back home. We wanted to make sure that we're able to come in and, and be a vibrant part of the community. Mm-hmm. And one way of doing that is coming and sitting around this table. So sitting around this table, we came up with some great ideas and we started doing some things. I know you guys had a uh, the community in the park, um, which I really enjoyed, where I got to meet everybody in town. So it was really a great thing. And we just continue to try to be support uh, and be a part of it. I'm Jane Hawkins. As I said, I'm the pastor of the First Congregational Church. I've been um, serving the church for the past 12 years. And... Um, as a faith leader, um, I really appreciate being included in discussing um, community joys as well as the challenges. And as people have already mentioned here, it's really been energizing um, to me to meet with one another, to meet the committed town leaders here, and to really be inspired by the work that the people currently around the table do, but so many others mm-hmm. as well. There's such a deep commitment to the needs of Portland and beyond. And so to be part of this work where we're striving to discern and meet the needs of all ages is um, really a privilege uh, to be a part of. And so just glad to be here. Welcome. And we have Janet Nocek from the Portland Library. Yeah, thanks. I think Jane... I really, that was very eloquent at um, what she said about, uh, you know, meeting the needs and enjoying what the people in the community have to offer. And I think a big thing at the library is getting people connected. And when I joined this group, it was various people who had hearing from different individuals and groups, knew about the needs in the community. And that's what is important for us to know you know, whether it be to decide what books to buy to help people and what groups to get in touch with, um, what to offer, you know, and so it was really helpful. And I really enjoyed, as as Jane said, you know, that kind of coming together and, uh, you know, a lot of it is echoed. Uh, you know, we got to talk to the superintendent of schools. He's been in on this. And, um, you know, that sometimes we're all in our little silos of our jobs and we don't get together. And it's, um, it's great to find out how we can not only help each other, but support what we all are doing for the people in the community. That's the main thing. Well, I think since you did mention the superintendent of schools, we have others that sit around this table, and it is Superintendent Philip O'Reilly, uh, Fire Chief Bob Shea. We have a representative from the police department, Officer Paul Licio, and is certainly we have the support of Captain Ron Millardo as well to be part of the team to talk about a lot of the different subjects what compelled you to go the next step? I know, uh, Pastor Bill, you had mentioned how the energy around the table and how you wanted to build on that energy, because I think that's so important with us that when we have that energy, sometimes it's hard to to feed into the energy and get the group to be involved with it. And I have to say that 
with this group, it wasn't difficult to get people involved, which I am very grateful for from the side of the of the town to say it was wonderful that people were willing to to get involved. But what what did you feel was the important task or mission of going further that this is us, Portland, our community conversation continue? Well, I, I, I see in this group a really unique opportunity at, at, at a level of effectiveness where we can actually in, in, um, incarnate some change for the better in the community uh, in a world that, that's um, radically oppositional. You know, people seem to be taking a perspective that's their own and protecting it and railing against other perspectives that maybe don't agree with them. And that, that saturates my experience of, of living in this in this culture today. And what was so refreshing around this table was that a group of very diversely um, focused professionals came together and discovered that we're all dealing with the same challenges. We're all human beings. We're dealing with the common humanity, though the circumstances and the focus within our silos uh, maybe uh, have a unique um, uh, perspective. Uh, when we bring all those voices to the table, you begin to get a, a larger picture that says, wow, this is, it's a, life is a we program. It's not about me and, and what I have to add that's value. It's about we're all in these same issues together, um, uh, interacting with the community in, in a kind of a unique way. But we can all be more effective when we see the whole picture. And the Dalai Lama talks a lot about that when perspective is one of the eight pillars of joy. And the more voices you get, the more eyes you get around uh, a community, uh, the, 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 the richer the, uh, the perspective is that, that we can then bring um, our best selves into um, to, to help um, bring peace to, to a world that's really torn apart by uh, divisiveness. So this is, this is one of those real, not, not, not ideologies, but a real hands-on way of becoming what I think what our hearts all desire. So. Yeah, and I, I think, um, Bill, that having support um, from one another is important. I think conversation is something we don't do enough of. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of communicating that I know in my day-to-day -day that I do um, more in the written word, whether it's um, writing emails or writing letters or trying to communicate um, technologically. Um, or over a, um, sometimes over a telephone, but this um, eye to eye and voice to voice and communication together, I think, um, as Reverend Bjornberg or Phil points out, um, we need that support from one another. And um, I love radio. I love listening to podcasts. I, I get a lot out of listening to that human voice and that mix of human voice that comes when you're sitting around a table together. Mm -hmm. Whether you're here or you're sitting on the other side of the microphone listening, it's very effective um, and very supportive. And I always leave these groups feeling that I'm a better person maybe than when I came in because I can't, can't do it alone. Whatever the day might be for me or I hope for others that are around this table. So I look forward to some more of these, these uh, podcasts. Um, and maybe engaging and listening to some other voices that I hope will join us too. I think, so, oh, go ahead, Mary. I think one of the things that we do understand is that we can't do it alone. That I'm, I am continually saying the partnership word. And without the partnerships that we have, we don't really succeed in our town. And we certainly have those strong partnerships. And I think that's why bringing people to the table to not only talk about the the heavy duty topics, but sometimes just topics of learning something that did, you know, kind of topics is what our goal is going to be over the course of time. Also knowing the struggles families have with time. Families are doing so many different things, whether they have children, they have different activities or the adults they're they're Everybody's going on this fast stream right now and trying to get some kind of venue that, we're going to be able to bring those people all together because they're going to be listening on the other end of this. And we're hoping that by doing this, we're going to bring some experiences, some knowledge, some really uh, good information out to our community and knowing that all the people around the table that you talk about our community here, but we're talking about your individual communities. There are many, many numbers that we're hoping that are going to be listening in and 
we can hope, are going to be listening in to this. So, yes, let's continue. I'd just like to say a bit about the, yeah. the energy and the humanity that came out of this group. We decided to call the group This Is Us. And the whole idea is it's not just about the people around this table. It's about yeah. the entire town of Portland Absolutely. and the humanity yeah. that is in our town. And all of your voices and all of your stories and all of your ideas. So we're hoping to bring all that information to you, but with you, with the community, so that it's, it's a team effort. And it really is truly This Is Us Portland. Anybody else? Some- and, and we want to involve other people they're welcome to come to the table if they you know if you have something to offer please get in touch and uh, Mir Pont is great here and um, my door is open at the library if you want to contact me and let us know anything any needs that you see that we might not be touching on please contact us our goal is to make this um, a monthly listening by the citizens of our town and bringing valuable topics to everyone and certainly would love to hear what what our listeners want to hear about what our townspeople want to hear about right because that's that's the whole idea of this and to grow with it you know and bring professionals to the table or community members to the table they're going to be able to share experiences or knowledge about some some topics that sometimes they're not always comfortable topics we've had uh, a couple of our this is us conversations that they're not always comfortable topics to to cover and it is hard to listen to it because you don't want to accept that it's in our town or that's happening to our community, but it's being open to the ideas of how can we, we know that we can't fix things, but we can certainly try to make them better. And it, working together, I think we can do that. I think that's a good segue into wrapping wrapping up our first podcast. Um, I'd love to hear from all of you, just, just ideas about future topics, what you think should be covered and would be interesting to our community members. And as, as well as we talked about, if community members have ideas and really want to come to the table, we'd love to hear your voices. Well, one, one thing, um, Susan speaking, um, one of the things that, <laughs> that I like to do is let people know what's going on in the town. Absolutely. And um, so I hope that we're able to, every time we meet, talk about a few things that are happening. Um, and that, that's something I, I, I'll bring, bring my notes. Right, yeah. perfect. Anybody else? Future topics of interest? Well, well, as long as I have the opportunity to bring it up here, this is Reverend Phil again. Um, There's a conversation here at the table that's kind of densely shared amongst us, but the conversation is really a larger conversation with the community. And so uh, I'm excited about the podcast being uh, an opportunity for for us to create a two-way uh, conversation and dialogue Mm -hmm. with the larger community. Now we're we're able to, to, to bring everyone into the table into with the us, voice. even though they're not sitting here with us. And so I'm excited about that. And uh, and I'll say some of those things are challenging. You know, it's yeah. doing the right thing and, and trying to improve community and, and, and support the common good sometimes threatens uh, the unknown. It's, it may threaten existing systems. I've, um, you know, I have a vision for uh, and a heart for folks who uh, don't have the opportunities I've had to, to, to have a good career and have a home. And, and, and so... I, I would like to establish a residence uh, in Portland, and this is such a nice community. There's folks that want to come here that have not don't are not people of privilege, and to give them access uh, creates some challenges. And so the approach to um, trying to solve that issue, for example, um, you know the language you used as a sober house um, is, can be threatening, but a sanctuary for folks who are in need uh, may not be so threatening. So. To, to enter into a conversation to shift our perceptions about w- what words are laden with or what initiatives are going on would be would be really helpful. And, and I began a conversation that's, that's been very challenging. So I'd like to, this venue, this way of bringing all the voices in in a non-threatening way that says, hey, uh, this, is, uh, this is a challenge to me. This is threatening, you know, my safety or this is... You know, those kinds of real conversations around difficult issues is what for me is so compelling about... Right. Um, being a real community. This is a real community that can have these difficult conversations. So right. um, I, I'm really grateful for the leadership in this town and, and for you all here to, um, to help us begin to practice with that. 
I think that's well said. And I think um, I speak for all of us probably that there are um, people have preconceived notions of, say, a church or a library or a government agency that, oh, these people are you know bureaucratic or just I'll walk in and I have this horrible issue. I can't talk about it. They'll tell everyone in town about it. We are all very into confidentiality. We are all open. We've heard it all. We've had things happen in our own families. You know, please don't try to dispel that myth. I think that's one of the first things we could do here. And I have to agree with that, Janet, that a lot of a lot of times we don't think that it affects us. But when you think about does it affect someone else in your family, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does it affect your neighbor? Does it affect someone that your your child is going to school with? Right. I think we have to open that door to be understanding and to get more knowledge about it before we make assumptions of of what is going on in someone else's life. So, I think we've we've done a great today's been a great day. It's our first, and I thank you all again for coming. And we're going to continue this conversation with other topics. Right. And we look forward to hearing from our listeners and meeting again in about a month. So we we plan to record once a month with a new topic and move on from there. So thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. We hope you all have felt the energy around this table. I'm Mary Pont, Director of Portland Youth Services. And I'm Allison Bankey, the Outreach Coordinator here for the Town of Portland. We thank you for listening and we look forward to joining you next month.